Hello, everybody. I'm Pastor Terry Roberts. I'm continuing a short series on Be Healthy, how to be healthy as a leader. You know, this relates in the secular world as well as in the Christian world. If you're a pastor, if you're a small group leader, whoever you are, it's very important, as Paul said in Acts 20, uh, verse 28, to take heed to yourself first, to care about the things in your own life so that then you can help other people. Freely you've received, freely you give. You can only give what you receive. So it's important to take care of yourself spiritually, stay in the Word of God, read the Bible daily. Even if you know it, you know, keep reading it. Uh, some people say, oh, I've read that. Well, I read it every day. I read it because it, it refreshes me. So stay in the Word of God, have a reading program, have a prayer life, be in a, a small group, have accountability with other people. Do the basic things to keep your spiritual life where they need to be. I've been in the ministry for many, many years now, and I still need it. Actually, I probably need it now more than ever. I need those spiritual disciplines, so don't ever make light of those things. But then beyond that, if you're going to stay healthy in ministry, and most people don't stay healthy because of emotional or internal things, it's not usually a demon that jumped on them. You know, I believe that there are, there are forces of darkness trying to hurt you, but usually it's things on the inside of you. It's kind of that last straw, that emotional thing that pushed you over the edge. You know, people leave marriages because they say, I, I just couldn't take any more. It wasn't that that last thing was a big deal. It was just the last thing. And the same is true oftentimes in ministry. It's just the last thing. And so after you get those things down, you're, you're walking with God, you're with Jesus. Uh, the, the first thing is to stay on mission. The Bible says to make your calling and your election sure. It's very important that you determine what it is that God has called you to do. You know, people always talk about wanting to do great things. I think it's better to do things that God eventually causes greatness to come from rather than trying to do something big just do little things every day. What is it God has called you to do? If you are an, a bivocational pastor or you are a full-time employee for a company, make sure you establish your priorities and put God first, then your spouse, then your children, then your church, then your world. Your job fits in there. But whatever it is you're called to do, it's uniquely you. You can't imitate someone else's calling. The Bible says to make your calling and election sure or certain. What is it God said to you? What is the mission or the assignment? Write it down to the best of your ability and then ask the people in your life. You know, maybe over the years you put together some scriptures that really spoke to you or different things that you feel like God has told you to do. You know, I didn't plan to be a pastor. It wasn't a career choice. I needed to become a Christian. Now, I wound up in leadership in a church and going to Bible school and on to other education, but it wasn't my plan to pastor. God put together for me, the same thing, way he'll put together for you, a life's calling. And you need to determine, what is that? What is it he wants? And am I giving myself to that? Maybe you are called to the ministry, to the pastor, pastoral ministry, or to be a missionary. Maybe you are called to that. Maybe you're called to be a good husband or a good mom or, or a faithful employee and just be faithful to your church. It doesn't matter how big it is. You know, uh, John the Baptist said, a man can only receive what is given him from heaven. It's very important, though, that you do receive what is given you from heaven. Find your calling. Stop trying to get into somebody else's calling. Like they say, stay in your lane. If you're running a race, don't go into other people's lanes. Stay in your lane. Make sure you know what that is and be able to return to that with all of your heart. You know, after all these years of ministry, I can't say that I've ever known every detail of my calling, but I've known which direction to head. I've known what to do next. I'm sure that God has got surprises for all of us. But to the best of your ability, make your calling and election sure. The other thing is this. Once you're in, in uh, leadership, there are different types of leadership that you can be involved in. And you need to make sure that you do it God's way. I'll handle this on the next uh, podcast. But it's prophetic leadership, passive leadership, or performance leadership. Tune into the next podcast and I'll explain what that means. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Pastor Terry Roberts. God bless you.